Okay, for the next topic, I've got another handout for you where I start to introduce you to the big webmaster tools that we're going to look at from Google and from Bing. Uh, the big famous one, of course, is Google Analytics. How many of you have heard of Google Analytics before this class? Most people. What about Google Webmaster Tools slash Google Search Console? Okay, less people. And, and what about uh, Google, um, I mean, Bing uh, Webmaster Toolbox? less people. So we've got uh, three things to look at. I've got a handout for you. So let's go back to the network folder. Let's go back to the computer window on the desktop. Network location, classroom data Z. Scroll down to Campos Wednesday and drag to your desktop. One more document here, Campos SEO 2. Webmaster Tools. Drag that over. We'll look at it together. Again, you can print it a little later. But drag that PDF to your desktop. <coughs> Let's drag over to your desktop and then view it on your desktop. So this is a two-page document where we have a little section on Google, a section on Bing. But let's jump to page two first. Jump to page two. On page two of that document, we've got this big concept of conversion goals, which some might say is redundant. Conversions, that's a big buzzword in marketing, web marketing or non-web marketing. Conversions. Um, you must decide the goals of your company early on. In my fictional business, Victor's Bakery, I want people to buy my cupcakes. That's a conversion goal. In order to get to that goal, I have many other conversion goals before that point. So a conversion is basically taking a, taking a person and converting them into something else. Meaning, I want to sell cupcakes. I have people then that have not been converted to that. They have not bought a cupcake yet. Once they bought a cupcake, they're a conversion. They've been converted. They bought a cupcake. That's one kind of conversion. And notice here I have others before that. All of these, these one-sentence things are actually very deep things to think about. For example, get followers on Twitter. That's a goal that I have first. If I can convert people into Twitter followers, that can lead to the rest. For example, I'm going to use social media. As I say, uh, social media is a very important aspect of SEO because that's an audience. So let's say I'm getting followers on Twitter. Let's say I have 100 followers now. I tweet something about sale this Saturday on cupcakes. I, I might have 100 followers, that, but that doesn't mean 100 followers will care about that. Maybe two, maybe three, maybe 30. I don't know. But some amount of those Twitter followers will see that tweet and follow through with my offer of a coupon or a sale happening or maybe I did something else on social, on Twitter, maybe ask the poll. So some amount of my followers are going to follow through on Twitter, but I need followers on Twitter. Okay, let's say I accomplish that. Another conversion goal. Get social interactions on Facebook. Okay, so I'm going to also try to build an audience on Facebook, because Facebook is a larger social network than Twitter. It's about four times larger than Twitter. So I want to get followers, I want to get likes on Facebook also, because then I want to get likes, shares, and comments. I post something on Facebook, some people are simply going to click like and move on. Some people are going to click comment, and I see that they're a little bit more engaged. Those could be leads. Those could be potential people on social media that I can further market to, further target to, for some other goal because they've shown an interest, they've commented. I could get shares on Facebook. I might have 10 followers, 10 likes on Facebook, but maybe one of those that followed on Facebook has a thousand friends, and they shared my picture 
my coupon on Facebook to their 1,000 friends. So now I've reached more of an audience from the only 10 that I had, possibly to 1,010 people. So that would be another goal that I would have. If I get, if I get more interactions, I've completed conversions. Let's say I also create a Google Plus account. Um, speaking of which, with these two social networks, uh, you missed it, but if you were here yesterday, uh, we talked about setting up Twitter. That class will be offered again at some other point, but uh, yesterday was Twitter. Next week, next Tuesday, 6 p.m., we're going to be talking about Google+. Plus the social network Google Plus in my social media class. But next Tuesday, Google Plus. In two Tuesdays, 6 p.m., we'll be talking about Facebook. So Tuesday night, this month, I'm doing a social media class. If you'd like to know more about these social networks, because as we're seeing here, social media is important for SEO. Uh, and this Friday, uh, I don't have it listed here, but YouTube is also big. This Friday, uh, 9.30 a.m. I'm doing a class on Google and the big topic of that day this Friday will be YouTube. How to use YouTube for social media and SEO. So again, I got a bunch of classes, they all interrelate with each other. And I'll mention it again later, but here I'm saying I want to get site traffic from Google+. I want to create a Google Plus account, a Google Plus business page, a location page, a brand page. I want to create a page on Google Plus to help me get more traffic back to my business. Guess what? Google search is very well integrated with Google Plus, with Google Pages, with that Google social network. So when you search something on Google, you can get these Google Pages, and that can give you more traffic back to your website. So as I get more traffic back to my website, I believe I mentioned it last week, or I might confuse it with another class, but you want you want followers and such on social media but you still oftentimes want them to want to guide them back to your website because the next one here get more hits on my home page more traffic to my website I want to increase my traffic to my website because that's where I'm going to accomplish the goal of selling the cupcake of getting people to subscribe to my blog of getting people to click request a quote. I can't do most of these interactions, these big important conversions on the networks, on the social networks. I can't directly sell my product at the moment on Pinterest. I can't get people to sign up directly on my Facebook to my newsletter. I can't get people directly to, you know, hire me from Google+. Plus. They still have to come back to my website to call the phone number to fill out the form to complete that conversion goal. I still need traffic back to my website, usually. As I said previously, however, I might be able to manage everything just on social media. But for most of us, we are still going to need a website where we're able to do that. Sell the product, the goods, the services, etc. That's one goal, and once I've accomplished that, that's a conversion. More traffic to my site. I want to get more shares on my blog posts from my site. So I'm going to have a website that's minimal. I want to engage in social media. That's better. And I'm also going to engage in blogging. That's also better. So blogging is an important aspect of modern SEO. Blogging lets us create content on a regular basis, once a month, let's say, once a week, once a day, whatever. We're creating blog posts. Tonight when I get home, I'm going to start on that blog post that will accompany my video on Peach. I want to also do a quick blog post on Peach, put the video on the blog post to get cross traffic there, and share that blog post over on Twitter. So I get traffic to the blog post, to the video, to the website, in the hopes of eventually getting request a quote, or hired, or called, or whatever. So I want to blog, because I help your SEO, and I teach a class on blogging. I don't remember when, I think next month, but I teach a class in blogging. I don't remember the day or the time, but it's coming up sometime. 
and we'll spend three to four weeks all our blog. But I want people to read my blog and share my blog. As I get traffic to my homepage, to my website, I could get more readers to my blog. As I get more readers to my blog, someone really liked that blog post and found it very useful, they'll click share on Twitter. So now someone that came across my website that had 500 followers clicked share and my blog post sent, went out to their 500 followers. I might have had you know, 90 followers on my Twitter account, but now someone with 500 followers shared my blog post, getting me more traffic back to my website. Someone repinned it or pinned it on Pinterest, and they're a superstar on Pinterest, and that got me more traffic back to my blog. Another reason why to blog. How to blog is that class. So look for it in the catalog. Another possible goal that I could have is to get subscribers to my coupon newsletter. So newsletters could be valuable. Have you heard of uh, MailChimp? Have you heard of Constant Contact? Those are two big names in um, newsletter management. Those two companies have these free and paid versions, MailChimp and Constant Contact, where you build a <coughs> newsletter following. You get people to subscribe to your newsletter and you publish a newsletter once a month or a quarter or whatever timetable you want and then you have there basically a database of people that really wanted to know about your content, a database of willing people that you can market to. They've chosen to subscribe to your blog or newsletter, and at some interval you're going to send them something. You always have to be careful though about how often to send something on a newsletter. You've probably gotten a bunch of, you probably subscribed to a bunch of newsletters in your time, and you've gotten a bunch of uh, emails clogging your inbox that at a certain point you don't read them anymore and then you just unsubscribe or send it to spam or whatever. So this can be a double-edged sword but the thing about newsletters is that that is, that is an explicit, I always forget the difference, implicit, explicit. This is an implicit, uh, explicit uh, endorsement that they want to get emailed. They've given you your email and say yes, email me. Don't abuse that. Uh, unless you've got an amazing <coughs> newsletter with amazing content, you probably don't want to email people in your newsletter every day. Maybe once a week, maybe every few days, maybe once a month. I don't know. It depends on your brand and your followers and your product. But notice I also have your subscribers to my coupon newsletter. Not just subscribers to my newsletter. Because why? What's in it for them? in that newsletter. I subscribe to a few at the moment, like the fries, the fries email newsletter. I love it and I hate it because every time I get it I want to buy stuff at fries. I see a lot of great stuff I want at fries. And I have to be very strong and not go out and buy it every time. But I'm enticed because fries in their news in their emails also give you a unique coupon code where you get these discounts. So that was there. USP, the unique selling proposition of Fry's newsletter. You're going to get a unique code that is going to be 10% off, 20% off. Don't just beg people on your website, subscribe. Why? Am I going to get exclusive coupons? Am I going to get exclusive content not available elsewhere? Why is someone going to subscribe to your blog or newsletter? Entice them. Then I want to get virtual clients, which are my followers, to come to my physical location. Great, I've got a thousand Twitter followers. And I've got 5,000 Google Plus followers. And I've got, you know, 6,000 likes on Facebook. Great. But is that follower from Germany going to be as valuable as the one in Chula Vista when my store is in downtown San Diego, where I sell most of my stuff? So, I want to get these virtual clients, the local clients, to go from cyberspace to meat space to the real location on Main Street. And that can be 
obviously easier said than done. People are on their mobile devices or laptops very easily browsing the whole world. But then to get out of the house and go down the street to buy that product, that's a little harder. And in the social media class and such, that's where you learn a bit more about creating interesting content, content that creates action, conversions. But one of my goals here is to get those clients that live 10 miles, 10 mile radius, come to the store. Because then my ultimate goal, get clients to buy my cupcakes. To actually make a sale. You should see that it's a long, involved process to get from point A, a potential client follows you on Twitter, to point Z, the follower visits the store and buys a product. That is why search engine optimization goes hand in hand with search engine marketing. You also need to be active on social media, or Yelp, or YouTube, or your newsletter, or even old school putting out, um, putting out your um, a flyer um, on park benches, on windshields. All of that stuff still works. The much more glamorous world of social media and online marketing is catching attention, but it still works to hand out someone a flyer or give someone a business card at a at a meet and greet, you know, um, networking event. Every aspect of marketing works. It just depends on your on its expense, on its complexity, and how dedicated you are to it. So a little bit later, I'll show you this great blog post about ideas for more ideas for marketing. There's lots of them. And I've got one more link here on the bottom of this document, an emerging term that takes both into account, SEO, SEM, is content marketing. So nothing specific about social media in the title. Um, that's, a, that's an emerging word that I see here and there. I think, the, however, those of us in the business hear about it more. I think the regular populace is, is now understanding the concept of SEO a bit more. So that's the, that's the word, that's the buzzword for the general populace. Research engine marketing, that's a bit more for us in the business, but some of the regular people are starting to hear that term. And maybe content marketing is even more cutting edge than the previous. So regular people might not have heard that one yet, but I'm going to take a quick look at that link. <coughs> this is over at Forbes.com, so you know they're a big name in entrepreneurship. They, they have a website, they have things that they sell, they have a magazine, I think they have a subscription online. Uh, I click that, I get this quote of the day. It is not enough to be busy, so are the ants. It's important to be busy about something important. But the article then goes on here to explain it's got 70,000 views. Um, Josh Stimel, or Stimel wrote it. Um, you've got a bunch of... This is a good example also to... If you, if you need a quick look at what good um, blogging is about, I like this one as an example. So in the blogging class, we'll, we would go into more detail, but this has basically social media attached to it. It's got links to further get more information. It's got pictures to break up the monotony of text. It's broken down into sections, like a top five list, so you can just jump to something to get more um, detail of what you care about. But I would definitely follow that link and look at it. It's not a long read, but I like it as an example of a good blog post. It explains the concept of content marketing. Any questions on page two here? Let's jump back to page one then. We'll look at this in general, then we'll do it together. What are the best guidelines 
nowadays it's harder to be found by potential clients. There's just so much competition. The best advice is to rank, however, come straight from the search engines themselves. The search engines give you the do's and the don'ts. So there's a link there. We'll look at it in a bit, but there's a link there directly to the webmaster guidelines, all the detail from Google, which changes, as I said previously, it's a moving, it's a moving target, SEO. So the search engines do provide us professionals with the advice and what to do and what not to do. What we'll be doing when we set up Google Webmaster Tools, we'll be talking then about verifying your site. This is claiming your business in order to track conversions and use all of the tools you need to verify you have access to the site. You'll be either uploading a file Google gives you, or, Bing, or adding HTML code to your site. As, as, I, as I said last week, hopefully you're going to bring your password this week so that we can connect to your site and complete that step. If you're not able to do that in class, well, just follow along, and when you get home you can do it. But we need to claim our site, verify it with the search engines. It's not really that complicated, and we'll do it together. The concept of sitemaps will be talked about, and these are very important because we want to help Google know about all the pages on your site by submitting a sitemap. There's a plugin to do this. It can be done manually, but honestly it's very complicated manually. But in most modern website building tools like WordPress, you can do it with a plugin, like a little app that does it for you. I'll explain more what a sitemap is in a bit, but that's an important topic. And the thing about Google at the moment is that they've got the Webmaster Tools, which is now actually known as Search Console. I haven't updated that, sorry, but Search Console is what you'll be seeing when we log in. Old name was Webmaster Tools. And they've also got a companion product called Google Analytics. Analytics is the much more famous one, and usually the one you're going to spend more time using. And we'll talk about both, of course, why we need both. So these two products from Google are separate entities. They're both merged together for Bing. So we'll, be, we'll need to set them both up for Google when we do it, but for Bing it's, on, it's basically all in one. And then there's a section on Bing, which that's got its link directly to how do you optimize for Bing. Many of these concepts overlap. Um, they have some nuances which we'll look at. We also need to verify with Bing. Uh, it's also highly recommended to, uh, to submit a sitemap. And I have a link here about more info at sitemaps.org. Yes? Google Analytics free, so if I log in, it's all It is free. They recently started a brand new premium version. So I, being cynical, I don't doubt it that at a certain point to get the best results, you're going to need the premium version. But at the moment, and basically all along, there was this free one, and we're going to use the free one when we set this up. So sitemaps, you can read more about them, but I have a recommendation here. If you've got WordPress, you want WordPress SEO by Yoast. There's other ways to make sitemaps if you've got WordPress or other software, but honestly the, the classic manual way, the classic Dreamweaver way, or HTML, that way's hard. Even I wouldn't do it. It's, I've had, you know, 15 years doing this, and I wouldn't do it. It's hard. Um, we've got, with Bing, we've got link additional sites. Modern SEO is not just about what you do on your site. It's also about what you do outside your site, SEM. In short, this means your business should be active on social media. Bing provides a screen for you to add all your additional sites. At the moment, Google doesn't have something exactly like this. Bing has this where you can go to a screen and say, here's my Twitter, here's my Facebook, here's my app in iTunes, here's my app on Android, here's my podcast. You can tell Bing, here's everywhere that I am besides my website, so that you can also see the traffic from those sources. Um, Google does let you track, for example, if you've got an app, it can track those conversions. But, and it will tell you the data coming from Twitter and such, but Bing has a slightly different version of it. As I said previously, the search engines are in business to show you the best search results. That's their product. 
So each one feels they can show it to you the best way. The algorithm is different. The, the computer program that figures out how to rank you is different. When one s search engine accomplishes or implements one feature a certain way, the other search engine eventually implements a variation of it, and vice versa, because they're in competition. And that's the direct link to get into the Webmaster Tools for Bing. So we're going to take a break, and after the break, we're going to set this up for you to gather your passwords and such, hopefully. We're going to set this up together right after our break. And um, <coughs> usually um, this takes a little bit of time just because we've got a big class and everyone's a little different. So I'm going to talk about this in general, and then we're going to have sort of like in the middle of the day one-on-one. -on -one. If you'd like to do it, I'll help you out right here because everyone probably varies a little bit. That'll be after the break. It's 126. We'll be back at 136.